The biggest figures in AI, they have just thrown out the Bs and started talking in Ts. Two AI titans, they're now prophesying trillions of dollars in opportunity. Stratospheric predictions from NVIDIA chief Jensen Huang. And over the course of the next four or five years, we'll have $2 trillion worth of data centers. And then there's Sam Altman's ambitious new venture. Seven trillion dollars. Seven trillion. Seven trillion dollars. He likes, he likes to because big, big numbers. That's more than the entire US federal budget, two times the UK's annual GDP, more than the value of Microsoft and Apple combined. It's not even conceivable, yeah. of course. I mean, nobody raises trillions of dollars, first of all. Altman's response to the critics, you can grind to help secure our collective future, or you can write substacks about why we are going to fail. Substacks, or in our case, this week's Tech Check, AI's trillion dollar opportunity. NVIDIA's latest earnings report, it crushed analysts' already sky-high expectations for the AI darling. We start with that massive move in NVIDIA. You're going to hear that name a few times here. Bet the over on this one. <laughs> $22.1 billion in sales. That's 10% higher than the street even expected. Forecasting $24 billion for the next quarter, beating estimates by another 10%. And a lot of it, though, is driven by data center revenue. It's bread and butter, which grew 38% quarter over quarter to $18.4 billion. There had been signs of worry in the market that NVIDIA's stellar run was unsustainable. Shares fell nearly 10% in the week leading up to earnings. You have to wonder at what point does something trigger this thing. I mean, the story can't, I don't think, last forever. And Double ordering, triple ordering, margins compression is more people get into the space, more competition. I don't know. We're getting close. Concerned that demand might wane, more competition, and that NVIDIA's chips wouldn't pack the same punch as the industry shifts from something called training to inference. Here's what that means. The first step in developing an AI model is training it, feeding it tons of data, images, video, text. That requires heaps of compute power with those highly sought after NVIDIA H100 chips. After the models are trained, though, the next step is inference. The model is able to start generating its own text and pictures based on that training data. One analyst wrote, demand growth for NVIDIA chips will eventually moderate. AI chip demand will eventually normalize once the initial training build has been completed. The inference phase of AI is going to require less computing power than the training phase. But NVIDIA says it's cornered this market, too. The amount of inference that we do is just off the charts now. Almost every single time you interact with ChatGPT, you know that we're inferencing. Every time you use Midjourney, we're inferencing. The inference part of our business has grown tremendously. We estimate about 40%. 40% of data center revenue from inference. That is two times higher than Morgan Stanley estimated. And it crushes the bear's warnings. The inference will scale. Like the more queries I have, the more use cases I have, the more compute I will, I will need installed. And, and it's not all happening like at, at the edge. A lot of that's gonna be happening in the cloud and a lot of that will be on GPUs too. Plus, it's not like the training phase is over. OpenAI's next GPT model is still in development. Training can actually get very big too because the model sizes, you know, GPT-3 had 175 billion parameters. GPT-4, they, they haven't released the specs, but it's rumored to have over a trillion parameters. And, and, and those are going. Up. And that could help explain why NVIDIA doesn't see demand going anywhere anytime soon. We expect that demand will continue to be stronger than our supply provides and uh, through the year. And we'll do our best. The uh, cycle times are improving. Another concern among investors, the infamous cyclical nature of the semi industry. It's known for being prone to downturns. The idea that there's a years long but constant rotation between scarcity and oversupply. High demand for specialized chips, that leads to a shortage and price hikes, that leads to more investment and eventually more competition, more supply, and then leading to a correction. That could still happen. And according to Databricks CEO Ali Godsey, it could happen as soon as this year. I actually think there's going to be a GPU glut this coming next year. When there is in market a scarcity, the market rushes to produce. So I think we're going to see lots more GPUs next year. What is that going to do to prices? I think the price of GPUs, of course, comes down. But NVIDIA's management, they don't see that happening anytime soon. We expect our next generation products to be supply constrained as demand far exceeds supply. And the U.S. is only the start. My expectation is that what is ex being experienced here in the United States, in the West, will surely be replicated uh, around the world. And these AI generation factories 
are going to be in every industry, every company, every region. So the company has begun laying out their opportunity in trillions instead of billions. All of those older uh, data centers are going to be modernized, so that'll make them more uh, efficient over the next five years. That's going to create a $1 trillion opportunity. The second trend is going to be general uh, enterprises that are spending on creating large language models, mm -hmm. and so they're purposely buying new GPU data center uh, units to build, and so that's another trillion dollar opportunity within the next five years. After the company already added a trillion dollars to its market cap over the past year, but Jensen Huang is not the only top dog in AI minding his T's and B's. Sam Altman wants to transform the entire global chip industry, the picks and shovels of the AI revolution. And he reportedly may need up to $7 trillion to do it. His chip dream is about developing AGI, or artificial general intelligence. Because we're not going to have enough chips or enough electricity to power the chips we need to, to get to overall artificial general intelligence. OpenAI defines AGI as systems that are broadly smarter than humans and has the ability to teach itself, thereby creating new, even potentially smarter AGIs. The implications for humanity, they're huge. AGI could find new ways to cure diseases, uncover new insights about the universe, lead to breakthroughs in technology. But there are also risks. AGI could become so powerful that it might stop listening to humans and do things to harm us. So the development of responsible AGI, that is the true holy grail for AI researchers. And chips or semiconductors, critical technology to get there. Sam Altman is on the other demand side of NVIDIA's supply shortage. The argument across the board is simple. NVIDIA is the only AI chip game in town. The strong demand for AI infrastructure will continue to outpace supply, which is already constrained, and everyone seems to be just clamoring to get these GPU chips. GPUs are those specialized cutting edge chips that NVIDIA dominates the market for. They're needed to power the most advanced AI models. According to Altman, their scarcity is the only thing holding back him open AI and a breakthrough in AGI. In Sam's view, we need you know uh, just a quantum leap in the number of chips we have. It's hard to wrap your mind around what that leap would look like. It's sort of interesting though, in terms of what it implies uh, Sam Altman believes we need in terms of computing power though. Like, is it, are they really like looking at things where you could need hundreds of millions of GPUs? OpenAI is already awing users. Just recently releasing another feature called Sora that can generate videos just from text. This is an AI generated video of two pirate chips inside a cup of coffee. And this is a video showing Lagos, Nigeria in the year 2056 and wildlife on a river in Malaysia. All hypothetical videos created purely with AI. This technology OpenAI was able to develop with a GPU shortage. So imagine what Altman might be able to accomplish with $7 trillion worth of GPUs. You talk about investments and things, you usually don't talk about $7 trillion. That, that is deep. That's a lot of power, a lot of computing power. That's human level sentience that, that, yeah. that is coming soon. But there's a shortage for a reason. Solving it is way easier said than done, especially for Sam Altman, who has spent his life in software and the Silicon Valley bubble. Chip making is entirely physical. Like Cisco's routers and switches enabled the rise of the internet in the 90s, high-end chips are the hardware of the AI era. I always say like these are the most complicated things that humanity has ever made. So there are only a handful of companies that are able to make those chips right now, including Intel, Taiwan Semi, and Samsung and it took them decades of R&D to build up the capacity to manufacture them. It makes more sense for him to partner with various foundries or help them to get funding. He could buy Intel for a lot less than that and fix Intel's problems for a lot less money than $7 trillion. Designing chips has proved just as difficult. Deep-pocketed mega caps like Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Meta, they're all trying to make custom in-house chips, but they all still rely on NVIDIA's. It's orders of magnitude larger than anything that like anybody has ever done. The semi space is already constrained. TSMC and Intel right now are building, you know, they're, they're having trouble finding enough construction workers to each, to each build like one factory. Altman may be looking to build hundreds. If he could build them, like where, where could he get the tools? Again, we're talking a number that is like multiples of the, the amount that the entire industry has ever spent. The lead time alone for getting chip making tools was as much as 12 months as of early last year. How could you actually ramp up production to, to, to get the, you, you, you couldn't. And finally, where do you even find $7 trillion? 
During the pandemic, the global chip shortage underscored just how reliant America is on just a few companies. The world's largest semi-manufacturer, TSMC, produces 90% of the world's chips, including all of NVIDIA's. And its headquarters is in Taiwan, a region with complex geopolitical dynamics, raising national security concerns for the United States. The fact that we are so overly dependent to a couple of countries in Asia to access semiconductor chips that we need for life-saving medical equipment, cars, uh, every piece of technology, showed us uh, we got to get to work. We need to get back to work making more chips in America. It's why President Biden's $53 billion Chips Act aims to fund domestic chip manufacturing, giving America more control over a critical industry. But Altman's ambition to remake the industry at large, it is a far bigger project, one that would create a complex partnership between OpenAI, chip makers, investors, power providers, even governments. It would require capital from even bigger sources, which is why Altman is reportedly talking to sovereign wealth funds in the Middle East with trillions of dollars in assets. He sees the Middle East as a source of funds for those foundries, and he's looking for really towards the future where chips are the new oil. And look, guess who's going to be owning all these uh, foundries, you know, being the big investors, the place that controls the oil now. It's kind of ironic. Which raises yet another question. If semiconductors are an issue of national security, do you let Abu Dhabi get a foothold? I would try to find a way to create more of a regulatory sandbox where people could experiment with this technology. And what sort of auditing, what sort of safety measures do we want in place before you can deploy uh, like a super intelligence or, you know, however you want to call an AGI. And I think for a bunch of reasons, the UAE would be so well set up to be a leader in the discussions around that. Altman reportedly met with United Arab Emirates' top national security official to discuss the effort in recent weeks. That official also chairs the Abu Dhabi-based AI firm G42, which OpenAI has partnered with. Here he is with the G42 CEO. But G42 is also under scrutiny for its ties to China. The CIA and other agencies have issued warnings about its work with large Chinese companies. In response, G42 said that it would try to pare back its presence in China. It's going to be in the trillions. In the, in the Middle East. In the Middle East. In the Middle East. That's going to go over well. Seven, I mean, global, G, I mean, good for him. Sam Altman's chip ambitions, they are so big that some are comparing him to Elon Musk. Legendary tech genius, troll, maybe both. On social media, Altman is leaning into a provocative persona. After the Journal article about his $7 trillion chip ambitions, after that was published, Altman posted to X, why not eight? Followed by, quote, our comms and legal teams love me so much. A few weeks later, he would then downplay the development in a conversation with Intel CEO, Pat Gelsinger. And as Nvidia surpasses $2 trillion in market cap, some are drawing comparisons to Apple. NVIDIA's large profit margins and CUDA software echoes Apple's proprietary offering that has underpinned its decade-plus-long dominance. A new era of tech titans, trillion-dollar dreams, the AI transformation may just be getting underway. 